So I'll be talking about like what to do with secondary progressive MS and, and recovery. Now, um, we, I got this tie. My wife will not let me wear this tie. So I, I, just, I just am holding it up. Um, and I got this tie uh, when we did a MS uh, on the hill. So we, a bunch of us went with the National MS Society to uh, the Congressional Building. And uh, so I was wearing this tie then. Um, but um, when, uh, when I, for example, so I'm a yes dear guy. You know, it's very simple <laughs> to have a, a peaceful household. And, and many guys don't get it. You know, like your wife asks you to do this and there's back and forth. No, yes dear, two words for a happy household. <laughs> so, um, so I think three years ago, I was literally walking out the door at like noon on a Saturday to take the train to New York to fly from JFK to Zurich to Dusseldorf for an international MS meeting. I have my suitcase in my hand and my wife says, you're not going with those shoes on, are you? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? And I'm, I'm going to give a talk, you know, to a group of doctors behind a podium. So I, uh, I think this is the last time I ever tried to be rational. I said, well, sweetheart, I'm going to be behind a podium. She said, but they're still going to see your shoes when you walk around. So I, I land in Zurich at like 5 in the morning, and Zurich has this, all these shops, right? So I buy a new pair of shoes. And... Um, you know, I only have so much room in the suitcase, so I throw these other shoes around, away. My wife obviously doesn't like them. The heels were worn. I don't know. Um, so I give my talk. I fly back. I'm walking around the house with these new shoes. Does she even notice? Of course not. <laughs> so that's, uh, you know, just yes, dear. Um, but it's important to have a happy household because there are studies that actually are now starting to show inflammatory markers go up under stress, right? And this old saying, lovey die, dovey dies too, you know, I mean, people can literally drop dead from stress, although I know a lot of people that do better, but, but it's, you know, if you're under stress, it, it, isn't, it isn't helpful. Um, and that sort of leads into secondary progressive MS, although flare-ups. So we're not thinking so much of MS as relapsing, remitting, or secondary progressive. It's really a continuum. And I think secondary progressive MS might be overdiagnosed. Um, at least many times I make that mistake. And the new medications that Dr. Stankiewicz just talked about, all of the new pills are, are FDA approved for relapsing forms of MS. So that means that some of the uh, patients in the studies had secondary progressive MS with relapses. So here's someone, so the, so the difference between this which is you have an exacerbation, a partial recovery, and then this is maybe six months, the time can be varied. But let's say you have an attack of optic neuritis, your acuity goes bad, 2200, and you recover to 2050, and then for a year, you're 2050, and then you have another attack, your leg is weak, and then you recover, but it's not quite the same, but then it's stable. And if you're seeing a neurologist once a year, it might seem that you have progressive MS, but it's really relapsing MS with incomplete recovery because you're stable in between attacks. Now, this is attempting to show that even though this patient has an occasional attack, that in between attacks, there's progression. So every three to six months, you're gradually worse. And it's due to the MS, not due to um, just deconditioning or depression or arthritis. And that's where it gets to be difficult. So there's a medication that's approved for all forms of MS, including secondary progressive, called Ampira. 
and it advertised as a walking drug, and that has taught me some less lessons. So we've always sent people to physical therapy, and it's remarkable. So you get kind of unstuck, and this is a good time of year to get unstuck because you can get out, you can exercise, walk the dog, whatever. And so you've been feeling like you've been slipping, and all of a sudden, after a couple of months, you're better. So that wasn't the MS, you've been like out of shape. And, and, and Ampera can, at least some of the people, about 50% help walking by just getting the message through the scar tissue better. And some of us neurologists forget to use it as much as we can. So that doesn't, so that's not a disease modifying medication. And it doesn't always work, but many times it does. So I've had people that I've diagnosed as secondary progressive because I've seen them get gradually worse and then something happens. They're, you know, they've stopped smoking or the urine infections have been better controlled or they get motivated to exercise and they're really better. So they haven't been progressing, really. They've been worse, but it was other factors. And when I trained in the 1970s under Dr. Poser, who was um, an excellent MS doctor, um, he, he, we never heard the comment that you have a type of MS that can't be treated. Uh, we have treated everyone as well as we could. We didn't have the fancy drugs we have now, but I never heard that. We used everything we could, physical therapy, psychotherapy, vitamins, you know, positive thinking. Um, so, so we still need to do all of that. But nevertheless, no matter what you do, some people will get gradually worse. So this is a, a data that's old, but that's okay, because um, these are data prior to 1990. So this is the natural course of MS. So some people have mild MS, some people have more severe MS, and we know now that people who have two or three attacks early on in the first year or two with poor recovery are destined to have uh, trouble. But this, this is looking at everyone. So, you know, it's just like some people are smarter than others, some people lose their hair faster than others, so there's a continuum. So. Um, you know, some people have disability early, but so assisted aid to walk, this does not comment on cognition. Um, the greatest cause of disability in MS is actually cognitive dysfunction, but this is easier to, to measure. So, and these data come from like 10,000 patients. So, um, so without treatment, 85% uh, of people will have some need to, you know, a cane or more after 25 years. It's totally different now. Um, so that's, that's good, but without treatment. So without treatment, that means 15% of people will still be fine after 25 years. But who are those people early on? It's hard to know. So um, I have to have one colorful slide. So. Um, so this is similar to what Dr. Weiner showed. So the, these big uh, purple things are, are the bad guys. Anyone have solumedrol and you're worse after a few days? That's because we call that a cytokine release syndrome. So these IL-17 cells are, are attacking your uh, myelin and the solumedrol will s hit them and sometimes they're released in your circulation and you're actually worse for a few days. Most people feel better after intravenous solumedrol in an acute attack, but sometimes people feel worse. But anyway, the, um, these cells get out and attack the, um, the uh, myelin. But we know, I'm gonna jump, so we know from Bruce Trapp, this is 1998, so Bruce Trapp is a neuropathologist, so you don't want to be in his examination room <laughs> because these are brain autopsies, right? But Bruce Trapp published in 1998, so this is not news, that in the first 
uh, attack of MS, so this was a young person that died for other reasons, but in the first attack of MS, so when Dr. Weiner got the correct answer from Dr. Stankiewicz that you see under the microscope inflammation, but also there's demyelination, this is an electron micrograph, and it shows unwinding of the myelin, but here in this uh, really amazing slide that the axon is degenerating in the first attack. So, so it's a continuum. Um, so as, as inflammation causes more degeneration, meaning axonal loss, your body's ability to compensate diminishes. So we try to stop exacerbations early on to prevent disability, but some people didn't have that opportunity early on because of maybe the drugs weren't available when their MS started, or maybe they had more aggressive MS and the first couple of drugs didn't work, and so there's, there's damage there. Now to go back, so this just says what I showed you. So, so there are really three components, and, the, and this isn't you know, news, 2000, 2002, 1998, um, that there's inflammation, that the, so these T cells, which are white blood cells, get misguided and attack the myelin by inflammation. And if it doesn't go t too far, you know, if, if, uh, if you have an exacerbation and, and IV steroids can be started quickly, then the, the demyelination can be um, halted be before there's too much. And, and then the process of axonal injury um, occurs. So depending upon the attack and the person and treatment options, this can be stopped or this may continue. So I have a sign in my office that says, time is brain. And, and that doesn't mean everyone needs IV steroids the first time that they have a tingle in their finger. Um, Dr. Uh, Riemann and Dr. Weiner and I were having a discussion about early treatment for optic neuritis and, and saving uh, axons in the optic nerve. Um, and that, that isn't um, probably being done enough. So I don't want to, you know, s scare people because we have, we have good options to prevent this early on. Okay, so, so here are pictures. So this is a T2 hyperintensity, so that's an MS plaque. And this is another way to look at it. So the flare sequence compared to the T2 sequence shows more. Um, black holes, I used to tell people that's where a piece of your brain dies and goes to heaven, but actually some of those repair now. Uh, it's remarkable that some of those will uh, recover. And then this shows um, a brain in trouble, lots of uh, acute uh, lesions um, just by way of instruction. And I've had patients completely recover from, from this kind of MRI. So inflammation doesn't always lead to destruction. You just have to get right on it. So, um, so you have the breakdown of the blood-brain barrier, inflammation, usually mediated by the misguided or autoreactive T cells, and then um, the demyelination, axonal injury, and then when people have brain atrophy, then, then that gets to be uh, more difficult, so we want to prevent that. Uh, I've already commented on the methoprednisolone. Uh, for years, we used uh, combination therapy, and some of you perhaps have been on uh, Avinex and, or Copaxone and methotrexate or Imuran plus bolus cyumedrol, and we still use that. And that's pretty good therapy for secondary progressive MS for many people. And the first paper published for methotrexate for secondary progressive MS was 1995 by Donald Goodkin. So th that's a, a drug that um, the rheumatologists use. So Dr. Lava, who many of you knew and wonderful and still is a wonderful neurologist, 
would use 7.5 milligrams of methotrexate once a week. And the rheumatologists are like, laugh at that, you know, because like, they use 20 much higher doses. So it got to be, so when we were in the ACT study here, um, we were using 20 milligrams of methotrexate once a week with Avonex once a week, and then uh, methoprednisolone three days every other month. And, uh, and that was before Tysabri was available. Now with Tysabri available, we use less of that. But um, at the time, and sometimes I still, still use that. And Dr. Zanadinoff, uh, with whom I had dinner with Wednesday night, back in 2000, 2001, uh, published just uh, IV steroids alone uh, prevented brain atrophy. Um, you know, will steroids cause me to have problems? Well, you know, there's side effects, but depends upon the, uh, what you're trying to prove. So um, th this has nothing to do with expensive medications. Um, keep moving. If you can't walk, get in the water. Um, you know, you've you got to keep the joints moving. Um, I, I'm really leaning towards gluten-free diet. I don't have a big study to quote, but a lot of people seem to feel better. Try it for a month. If you don't see any difference, the heck with it. Um, the rule of thumb, don't eat anything that has more than three ingredients. You don't know what all those additives are going to do to your immune system. I 100% agree, have your kids play in the dirt, have them eat dirt, you know, roll around with the dog that's been outside. You know, if they get Lyme disease, that's okay. You can treat that. Um, you know, pain and spasticity relief if you can't sleep at night because your legs are jumping and your spouse has slept and gone to another room or you're up five times to pee. I mean, you, you're going to be a wreck. You know, you never get any rest. So all these details are a part of comprehensive treatment. Um, and then if you have another disease, um, you know, I have patients with MS and diabetes, and they're not taking the diabetes seriously. And that's really potentially a more serious disease than the MS. Lose your kidneys, lose, you know, so you gotta, you gotta pay attention to that, too. Um, all right. When I first see a patient, you know, the nurse gets the list of medications, I go in, go over it again, and then there are three other medications I forgot, right? Like, what is this 12 medications? So we start, like, do you really need this one? Do you really need this one? So, um, you know, some of these medications are uh, sedating. Uh, and then if you get exercising, uh, the YMCA's all have um, disability times, people to help you in and out of the water. You know, who cares what you look like in a bathing suit? Everyone looks the same. Um, and the aqua jogger, you know, they have aqua aerobics, you know, so once you start getting some conditioning and getting some relief of your tight muscles, you can drop some medications. So you may be better, here's Ampira. Um, okay, so, um, so I pick, so these medications are approved for relapsing forms of MS. So for people that have secondary progressive MS, but in the last year they've had a relapse, you have FDA-approved medications that may or may not have been rigorously tried for secondary progressive MS. The trials are underway, but there are reasons to think that they're likely to work. And so what I do is I choose one, see a person every two months or every three months, how you doing? Whoops. So, um, so as, um, as has been mentioned by Dr. Stankiewicz and possibly Dr. Weiner, so Tysabri has been fully en enrolled in a secondary progressive trial. We, we won't have the results probably for two years, but there are a lot of reasons to think that Tysabri will work. And if someone's been doing poorly, and they're on Tysabri and they are do are they're, they're stable. You, know, you don't have to be better, you just have to stop getting worse. That's a success. If you're better, that's a, that's, that's a real success. 
Um, there's an issue of, you know, do you have the JC virus? Are you a risk for PML? But let, let's say you don't have the virus, there's not an issue. So Tysabri is an option. Uh, for years, uh, Avonex almost got approval for secondary progressive MS more than 10 years ago. It just, just didn't quite make it. But for some people, Avonex uh, can be helpful. Um, Copaxone, years ago there was the PROMISE study, and the PROMISE study did not live up to its promise. But there was a subset of patients, uh, men over 50, for whom it was effective. Um, you don't hear about that. It didn't get uh, FDA approval. But if I have a, a man over 50 who has secondary uh, MS or even primary progressive MS, Copaxone's worth trying, uh, and their data to support it, and you're not likely to be harmed. Uh, and the PROMISE study, I think the design, they tried to do too much. They're looking at secondary progressive and primary progressive and they didn't stratify ages. So if the study were redone looking at an enriched population, you know, just people over 50, that might have been, um, might have been successful. Um, Mitoxanthrone, uh, I don't use it all because of the toxicity for leukemia or heart, but it, 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 uh, I really use cytoxin for really hot cases, uh, people progressing rapidly but it is FDA approved for uh, secondary progressive. Uh, it's too dangerous. Fingolimab, so there is a primary progressive study with uh, Gelenia. We don't have the results, but there, bec because of the um, medical and scientific reasons to think that would be helpful for progressive MS, uh, I, I do try that, and sometimes it's good. Um, I, I haven't uh, had too much success with the Baggio for secondary progressive, but Tecfidera, I've had some great success with Tecfidera. Um, so these are, you know, personal experiences, but I don't say, like, there's, not, you know, there's nothing FDA approved, you know, we have to wait years. Well, what about now? What about me? And then we can also bolus uh, Salumedrol once a month. And, um, you know, not forever, maybe for six months, get people going. Um, so, um, so that's where we are with secondary progressive now, except we're in the middle of an anti-lingo antibody study. And can we turn down the lights? Is that possible? Should have asked that earlier. So um, these are slides that were given to me by Misha, who is an uh, incredibly smart lady, um, who, uh, these are animal slides. But, um, so th this, this shows um, how, how uh, oligodendrocytes uh, are created, and it's the oligodendrocytes that create myelin. And one of the problems with uh, MS, particularly progressive MS, is that the precursor to oligo the precursor oligodendrocytes um, sort of like poop out. So, um, to use a scientific term. <laughs> All right. So, um, th this this is uh, th these are human autopsy studies, and here's. Here's a patient who died who had uh, chronic MS, and, and these are plaques, and there's no recovery. But here, and here, and here, you can see sprouting of uh, oligodendrocyte precursor cells, where these people were trying to recreate uh, oligodendrocytes to make myelin. So our bodies can actually make myelin on their own, and Dr. Zadnoff up in Buffalo, whose little reference I mentioned to earlier, has actually shown in very fancy uh, high resolution uh, MRI, actually DTI, of live patients uh, recreating, growing new myelin. So it's possible if you stop the MS, or even if you don't quite stop the MS, that, that patients can uh, recover to some extent. 
And if you really stop the MS with whatever, Jelenia, Tysabri, then this occurs more. And that's actually what Dr. Zanadinoff showed. Now, um, so here's what Misha gave me. So uh, this is, so lingo um, one blocks oligodendrocyte uh, differentiation or d blocks uh, myelin regrowth. So um, if you use uh, anti-lingo to block lingo, you get more recovery of myelin. So, for, for you, so Dr. Um, Weiner mentioned the mouse model of MS. So for years we've been cur curing the mice of MS. I mean, there's so many mice that run around now great, you know, that didn't do so well. They drag their hind legs and then they run around. So these, this is the, the mice doing beautifully with anti-lingo antibody. And there are videos I've seen, they have little mouse MRIs about the size of my wrist. I put the mice in, get an MRI of the mouse, and then give my, I'm not kidding, actually. Um, and then the little videos of the mice, they're dragging their legs, and then a week later, they're walking. So, uh, but you gotta start somewhere. So the mice did really well. And here's, here are the slides. Of course, this mouse is now dead. But, um, so the mouse gave its life for science, and there's the um, new myelin. And here's more new myelin. So the light microscopy showing uh, with any lingo antibody or lingo blockade, the recovery of myelin, and then the electron microscopy is a little harder to see. But these nodes of Ron BA are um, the difference between like light speed conduction in uh, myelinated axons versus unmyelinated axons. So that's um, that's good stuff. So, um, so the study that we're still enrolling includes relapsing, remitting, and secondary progressive MS. Uh, it's very strict. Uh, you have to be under 58, so I'm out. Um, you have to be able to walk. Uh, you can use uh, assistance, but you have to be able to walk at least 120 meters, which is like a football field plus both end zones. Um, and then if you're relapsing, remitting two exacerbations in the last year, secondary progressive, one exacerbation. Everyone's on Avonex uh, for the trial. You can't have a failed uh, Avonex or other interferons. So the perfect patient for this is someone with moderate disability who's either not on any uh, medication or is on Copaxone and they're breaking through. Uh, it's, it's pretty vigorous, but um, monthly infusions, and uh, it'll be a long time before we get the results because the it's still enrolling. Two year, so if you're still enrolling and it's two years, and then you have to be the last person out, so it'll be three years before we have results. But it's, the trial started in humans. So, um, so the summary is um, we know so much more about MS, and um, there's always a lot to do for your health, no matter who you are or what you have. Um, we have agents now that can shut down MS, so some people can remyelinate on their own. But if you just keep what you have, look at the donut, not the donut hole, then, then that's, an, that's a success. So thank you very much. Thank you.